Western estate can never be occupied by any one of their public servants and they never claim it. So to that I want to explain when we get down to canon number 2033. So this is under Article 99 of Positive Law, Canon 2033. I'm going to read this out and hopefully it starts to explain why they can't claim the office of General Executor. So, while a public trustee within the Roman system may be granted from time to time the position of Executor of a Trust. Now, we know that they do that all the time. We know that when you go to court, it is the judge now that is uh, acting in the role of the Executor of the Trust. So while they do that from time to time, of a trust belonging to the estate of a legal person, by the very definition of an estate, no agent, principal, trustee or entity may presume to claim the role of general executor of the estate of the legal person except the flesh, mind and spirit of the being for whom the estate was first created. In other words, they can only go so far as to claim to be the executor of one trust at a time. They can't reach, there is no legal precedent. As much as they create presumptions, as much as they lie, they cannot stretch it to the point of claiming to be the general executor. And the simple reason is this. You are flesh, you are mind, you are spirit. You occupy time and space, and so long as you occupy time and space, they can't assume or presume the role of general executor of the estate. They can only hive off one at a time, one trust here, one trust there, and that's exactly what they do. They effectively act as general executor because they effectively tie off all those different trusts and get us to act as a trustee. But they never openly presume in writing or claim to be the general executor. Now that is important. When you go to court, you may claim, and some people have been developing this, and again, we pay homage to those that have been testing this, that you go to court and you create a position, you say, I'm the, general, I'm the executor of the matter and you challenge the judge in their office of executive. Now, the judge will get annoyed, and in some cases, the judge will huff and puff because they're trying to act as the executor and present you as the executor de son tort. And they may even call the bailiffs and the sheriffs to arrest you. But if you identify yourself as the general executor of the Franco Collins estate, the occupant of the general executor, of the office general executor, of the Frank O'Collins estate, they've got a problem, a real problem, because that's an office that they cannot claim. Now, if they huff and puff in the court at that point, then they are admitting to you that they have overstretched their position to a point that is untenable. No judge, no magistrate that is competent can ever claim to be the occupant of the office, general executor of the estate. They can't. It's their Achilles heel. And how they deal with it is through image training us from a very young age to act as trustees, to act as willing and loyal slaves, to bark when the bell rings, to be the Pavlov's dogs when it comes to their rules. That is why they cannot occupy the office because the office implies that they are the body, mind and spirit as one, they can only assume one trust at a time. Okay. So knowing that our strongest position is to be in the occupant of the office of the general executor of the legal person estate, let's look at one of the things in terms of signing and sealing before we move on to summonses and some of the practical examples of how we use this information now. To that, I'm going to ask you uh, on the uh, canons to go and have a look at Article 118. And 118 uh, begins with 
seal, and then we'll have a look at Article 119, which is signed. This is under positive law of one heaven. Now, this has also been updated because, again, we weren't clear on these things, and now we would put it in place. So 2206, a seal is the act of affixing a symbol to a valid document to attest its valid production, recording and registration, or to bind its contents as a solemn promise or execute its contents by authority. So this is a seal. So the point of a seal is one or all three of those things. And then you go down and you'll see the different types of seals. Absolute seals, great seals, official seals, ordinary seals, inferior seals, or private seals. We also explain what an apostille is. An apostille really is a private seal system from 1961. That's all apostille is. And if you live in Canada, Canada still doesn't have, a, a, is not still a signatory of the apostille system. That's all it is. It's just a private sealing system that identifies certain officials in each of those signatory states as having the authority to stamp and identify themselves and then those documents are recognised across all those signatory countries of the Roman system as being a valid seal. Let's move on to Article 119, sign, and we'll get into the role of signing as executor. So Canon 2214 of Article 119, sign. So let me just read out a couple of these because it's, I think, quite relevant to getting a handle on what we're saying. So a sign or signature is the act of affixing a name, word, letter, or other identifying mark of a legal person to a valid document to attest its authenticity as witness or execute its contents by agreement or to give it effect as surety for one owns act. So there's really three purposes to sign. One, as a witness, that is, to attest its authenticity. Two, to execute it, its contents. Or three, to give effect as surety to the contents. Now, when we sign, 99% of the time, if we have ever signed something, it is to give effect as surety. And in fact, the word sign comes from signo or signatum in Latin, meaning to mark, stamp, print, to seal a document, to coin or mint money, to impress, designate or note. Now we'll jump down to Canon 2217. Now see that there is a very clear difference between the signature of an executor and the signature by a trustee or beneficiary. And 2217. There are primarily two forms of signature by convention being the executor or the trustee beneficiary. Now the signature by executor is by custom and convention the first name only, the Christian name of the legal person to whom they are executor and the letter R full stop, including the period. For Latin, regnatum, meaning to be king, rule, reign, to be supreme lord of an estate. And two, the signature by trustee beneficiary is by custom and convention either an X or the full name, first name and family name in stylized script. It can also be printed. If it's typed, if you type in your name at the bottom and you don't actually put any mark, just the fact that your letters, your name is on the bottom is a signature in their system. Now, there is evidence to show that the signing of executor using the Christian name and the letter R, full stop, for the Latin regnatum or regnum, has been used in their system by nobility and titled persons other than the monarch. It is not purely the monarch, in this case Elizabeth II, R full stop, or Elizabeth R full stop, that has signed as executor in their system. There is evidence that earls, 
and other members of the royal family had been using R full stop for at least 100 plus years. So the claim of using the capital letter R full stop after your Christian name has been solely the provenance of a monarch and not simply as being the signing of an executor. There is evidence. And I'm hoping that we will have that uh, up on University of Decatur as we uh, find it. And if you do find it yourself, please send it to the Administrative University of Decatur so we can show people, because this is extremely important. It turns out that when you sign with your family name, when you sign with your family name, you are in effect assuming the role as being familiar, a member of a household slave. You are demoting yourself to the role of at least the trustee uh, or the beneficiary. But when you use your first name and you use the letter R, there can be no misunderstanding that you are the executor. But if you are going to use your first name in the letter R full stop, remember, when you do that, that is either to uh, grant, to witness, or to accept a surety. I hope you now realise that at no point should you be signing documents back to them in accepting surety anymore. And when we have asked people to present their ecclesiastical deed polls, it has been to execute those documents and bear witness, never to go surety necessarily to the documents. But as we move forward, we need to be even more forensic and more careful in the way that you use your sign and your name. You may have wondered, and I certainly did for many years, why in their system they did not sign documents. In particular, judges did not sign documents when issuing an order. Simply by order, and it would be the office of the judge, never their name, if their name is there, it's signed, with no signature. And I thought this was extremely strange. Until you realise that if the judge had placed their signature on the paper, then they effectively would be underwriting the order. They themselves would be underwriting their order. They would be making themselves liable to the contents being true. So if you look at Canon 2218, let's read this out. By custom and function, when a signature is affixed to a document, it is either to bear witness to its authenticity, grant certain rights by execution, or be bound as surety to the contents of the document. One, an executor never signs their name in the manner of a trustee or beneficiary unless they are acting in such capacity and only ever signs as first name in the letter R when in the context of a grant, deed, and conveyance, like an EDP. In all other cases, an executor never signs a document. Two, a trustee beneficiary signs their full name in the manner of a trustee beneficiary as a witness to the authenticity of a document or to accept full liability as surety to perform its contents. So in English, and to make sense of what this means, when you wish to return a response to them, they send you a summons, they send you a demand, they send you a threat, and you send a reply. We've discussed this before. The simplest way to get a private document public to them is to strong glue your own document to the back of a copy of the first page of the demand. They've sent you a demand. They've sent you a public document. The reverse of that document, and the word reverse means you have a window in which to reply. When you strong glue your single page reply to the back of the document they send to you, then you have effectively converted your